All right, so uh, my fiance is back. She's running the camera today. I, I got a request to do a video on hip arthrosis. I myself just did a, a quick Google search because you know Google is the perfect place to go when you have medical advice. I almost didn't make this video because Google told me all that we have to do is put a heating pad on our hip, take some injections, and then you're good. You're on your way. So I went and found a few studies. Here's what I found. Manual therapy is known to improve upon range of motion for hip OA patients, not in the long term. Exercise is found to be effective in limiting the need for hip replacement, but it's only 50% effective in doing so. What I just mentioned is the confusing result of searching the literature to see how effective exercise is for hip arthritis. This source, they reviewed the reporting of the types of exercise used with hip pain related studies, and these studies are supposed to talk about the training that was performed in relation to it being supervised, adhered to, and how patients are progressed and how to replicate those exercises. They found that less than 50% of the studies adhere to this criteria. There's no standard. The issue with cartilage issues is a lack of ability with compression. The goal was to come up with a progression that anyone could enter into for scalable reintroduction of compression. At the end, we will understand how to supervise, progress, and replicate an exercise designed to benefit cartilage issues of the hip. So for the ACL and the knee capsule, the way this structure adapts and opens is with tension. We get this tension developed when you use heel elevation to thrust the knee out. For the hip, it's less so one specific ligament like the ACL of the knee, more so a capsule of tissue around the hip joint. The focus is the same. First, elevate the heel. For the knee, we focus on a straight off leg and go forward. But for the hip, we focus on a straight off leg and go backward. From a physical therapy standpoint, a tight posterior hip capsule will make the bones lie in a more extended position. The starting point to help with that is an anterior to posterior mobilization. Notice in this video how the force goes from the front of the leg moving towards the back of the hip to open up those restrictions. When we elevate the heel and we shift our weight back, we are forcing open the posterior capsule from the front of the leg to the back of the hip and performing the exact mirror image of the knee focused poliquin step, which is great for ACL and joint capsule strength and freedom. But now for the hip, for posterior capsule and glute freedom. The higher we go, the greater possibility for loading. Anything limiting the ability of this hip capsule to go posterior, we worked in this position. The moment, my hip drops, the tension drops too. And just like the poliquin step, we don't want to go so far forward on our off leg where our heel starts to come up. We don't want to go so far onto the back leg to where toes start to come up, how to progress it. The posterior capsule gets tight in motions like sitting. This is because our hips are relatively stuck in extension. The hip gets curled under. You are extended now at the head of the hip while the length of the femur is in flexion. If I were to walk around in that position, you'd see that my hips are thrusted forward. So this motion seeks to open up the head of the hip while lengthening the hamstring along the length of the femur. No one should fear sitting. God made the human body to be unbelievably adaptive and resilient. Sitting in a chair isn't going to be the end of you, but the ATG principle of balancing the body through exercise just needs to be put into practice, just like we do with the knee. So the reverse step works the ACL and any anterior restrictions of the knee, while the reverse hip thrust works through any posterior capsule restrictions and the glutes. Now, applying these truths to hip cartilage health, let's take a clue again from the knee. Once we open up the restrictions in the knee, the ATG split squat is what we use to improve synovial fluid production and cartilage thickness. The same thing applies to the hip. Once we open up the capsule of the hip, there's more freedom available for things like an RDL. But notice with this position, both of my feet are on the ground. What if I have an issue between sides? What if I have a tightness in one hip versus the other? This was the same reason the ATG split squat was used to lengthen and strengthen between sides. So what do we do? Enter the reverse RDL. <sighs> Notice the similarities. In the ATG split squat, you have full knee flexion and in the reverse RDL, full hip flexion. <sighs> both of these positions are going to be the king for cartilage health in both the knee and the hip. <sighs> what did we learn? The exercises used in hip OA research are way too general, but still they have some sort of benefit. So we have to do some sort of thinking based on physics and biology to yield the effect that we want. The posterior capsule of the hip 
gets tightened with sitting. Again, that's not a reason to fear sitting, but it is a reason to balance the hip through exercise. We can lengthen the hip flexors with an ATG split squat. We can break through adhesions in the hip joint with the reverse hip thrust, which will free up the hip joint to get more blood flow and synovial fluid with the full range reverse RDL. which will help to get stronger, thicker, and more injury resistant cartilage. And not only that, but I stumbled upon this study that found two more molecules involved with exercise. Lubricant activates to inhibit adhesions in the synovial fluid, prevent wear on the cartilage. And irisin increases mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell to encourage cartilage cell growth and to strengthen the cartilage from the inside out. And these are both present when you progressively work towards your pain-free limit in full range knee compression and full range hip compression. Both of these exercises scale to anyone's level of ability with assistance for both the knee and the hip.